Hey, so quite a few people have been asking me um, about what kind of, I guess, expectations versus reality of off-grid living. Um, so here's a short video on my experiences of getting off the grid. So I've I've always loved wild camping um, and I've got a background in kind of activism and squatting and that sort of thing and um, and yeah real love for real love for woodland and wildlife and the countryside and um, and yeah obviously I'm a prepper as well so that kind of factored into my decision to go off grid. Um, but I've got MS, so that was kind of, uh, I was working crazy hours in civilization and it was kind of a bit of a stop the ride, I want to get off moment. Um, so I say I got my caravan and off I went. Um, so things that I thought that I would need before I went off grid that I no longer have any use for. Um, definitely the top one of those is running water and a shower um, and an indoor toilet because um, when I got my caravan those were things that I was I was definitely sure that I wanted um and now it's it's just it just seems a bit of a waste of space i've got such a small kitchen area in my caravan and having a sink there just kind of took up so much room and the indoor running water it was just i mean it's it's just so much easier for me to fill bottles um and then you know and pipes and caravans and vans and stuff can get clogged and it's just a little bit a little bit better i kind of i think to you know i've got my sink area out outside and like yeah like beautiful beautiful view to do for washing up to um so yeah indoor water that was that was the first thing that uh, that I kind of did away with um and shower and stuff as well when we got the caravan it was something that was like top of the list was to have a shower um and I think it was after about a week or something that it broke and stopped working um so it was kind of having a bucket wash in the shower cubicle but now I'm like you know what it's just so much easier to have a bucket wash outside um and it's like less clearing up and you're not going to get clogged pipes or anything um and like yeah again outside is absolutely beautiful i do kind of miss it a little bit in the winter um but then you can just kind of put a few towels on the floor and have a bucket wash inside sort of thing so yeah running water in a shower those were uh, definitely two things that uh, that got done away with I also originally had a gas heater in my caravan um, and that was absolutely terrible. I was so nervous about putting in a, a wood burner um, because a lot of my friends at the time had got wood burners in their vans and vehicles, but no one was like really kind of too up on how to do it. Um, so it was literally about a week, literally a week before the Beast from the East storm that my friend, uh, the amazing bloody pirate, came over and put my wood burner in for me. Um, and I've got a much bigger wood burner now, both made by the fire weaver. If you ever need a wood burner, then look him up. He's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And I could totally recommend him. And um, so, yeah, getting a wood burner in, that was something that I should have done from the start. And I would recommend if anyone's wanting to go off grid, get a decent burner. Because, I mean, it's going to be your cooking sauce and your heating sauce. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to the video I've done about my little awesome burner, but it's got uh, it's got a cooker inside it as well, which is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So yeah, if anyone's thinking about getting a burner, then uh, check that video out. Um, and so yeah, what are their expectations versus reality? Um, so I guess a lot of people kind of come into this um, thinking it's going to be, I mean, community is a real big part of off-grid living. But it's it's something that a lot of people are searching for and it is difficult to find um, as with somewhere to actually go and find a park up. When I when I kind of first got my van, I kind of thought, yeah, it's going to be difficult, but didn't realise how difficult. Um, I mean, when you've got kind of communities that are housing co-ops that are off grid and they're evicting people that are living on the land because they don't want people in caravans, it's uh, it's a little bit of a of a nightmare situation when you're kind of trying to be sustainable you're trying to be eco-friendly have a low impact lifestyle and there's kind of so much legislation that's now kind of 
you know, they're trying to put through to, to change it from a civil offence to criminal offence to live on land without permission. So I know that I am mega lucky, but um, for the majority of time that I've been doing this, I've been lucky enough to be given um, given a place on land with permission. Um, but uh, but that's one of the, one of the expectations and realities, I think. Um, and as we're finding communities, there are lots of places but it's quite a surprisingly closed off world. It's like one of those ones, if you know people that are there, then you'll kind of get into it. But if you don't, then it can be a bit closed off. Um, things like Woof UK, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Woofing um, stands for Willing Workers on Organic Farms. That is an absolutely, absolutely beautiful way to find off group communities. Um, and also the Diggers and Dreamers site. Um, and yeah, so I'll put links to those in the description but uh, but finding a community but I mean the last place I was at I turned up didn't know anybody spent like four nearly five years there and you know we've got an amazing community it sadly got evicted but uh, but we're going to be reconvening and uh, and good plans for the future there so community isn't always going to be the people that you're living with it's going to be the friends and the people that are around when you're off the grid and off-grid friends as well are just absolutely amazing i mean everybody has been in a situation where they kind of need people to come and help them with an instant repair of a roof in the middle of winter or whatever and um because everyone has been in that situation themselves everyone's like yeah of course i'll help you because when i need it i really really hope you're gonna help me out too and um sort of thing so it's a beautiful 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 system um kind of kind of could say codependency amongst off-gridders but I think it's a beautiful community everyone has different skills and everyone is willing to help pitch in but finding that community can be a little bit tough but uh but it's just keep going just keep trying and say like off-grid festivals things like the green gathering um absolutely absolutely fantastic fantastic places to meet people so uh so yeah i kind of i hope that that's helped i can't really kind of think many more of the uh, expectations versus reality things for off grid um apart from the fact it was a lot colder than uh, than i thought than i remembered because um yeah i had a few years living in civilization <laughs> between uh, between living in uh, in woodland spots and um and yeah in the winter i do have to say getting up at uh, at four in the morning to put the burner on so that the dog isn't shivering when he wakes up for his breakfast that's uh but i mean it's kind of it kind of adapts into your sleep pattern after a while to be fair and you get to live a lot more seasonally as well and i think that living seasonally is fantastic i've always felt really confused and a little bit uh a little bit worried about the uh, daylight saving like where is my hour gone what have they did with my hour and it just really messes with people's sleep systems and when you're off grid you literally i mean i do find now that i'll wake up with the sun and i'll go to sleep with the sun and it's fantastic in winter i'll sleep more but that's natural that's what animals that's what mammals do in hibernation um i mean it's it's completely unnatural for people to live a nine to five existence like 365 days a year um so yeah seasonal living and yeah and like i say you know i kind of i started my off-grid journey because my health in civilization was just taking hit after hit after hit and getting off grid being being away from civilization has done my health so much more good than i could ever have imagined so the expectation versus reality on health and happiness for me has uh, has definitely gone up i think with off grid living but um yeah anything else anyone wants to ask me please ask away i hope you guys are all having a good evening peace and love <laughs>